can a DIY mini PC server beat a NAS on power draw and cost? Wait a minute, that sounds crazy, but trust me on this, it is absolutely possible. We're going to take a mini PC server and make sure that it's better than a NAS in terms of power draw. It's going to use Proxmox and some VMs. It's going to have 2.8 terabytes of RAID Z SSD storage. We're also going to have less than 30 watt idle power draw. There's also going to be a 16 terabyte scratch disk, great for transferring some quick data, and even power redundancy. But more on that in a future video. There's also going to be 2.5 gigabit networking, can you believe it? Sounds too good to be true, but you can be the judge. Let's have a look at this machine. This is the HP Elite Disk 800 G3 Mini. And we've done lots of videos on this right now, coming up on the fourth video. Now, if you want more information on this, check out my previous videos. But for this build, we're going to be very focused on power draw. And I don't mean the power draw when we're doing benchmarks like Signbench. I mean power draw as in when we add individual components like the RAM or an NVMe or something like the 10 gigabit network interface card. Yeah, more on that in the future. Maybe an M.2 2.5 gigabit network interface card. Maybe SATA adapters for your hard drives, converting them to USB and a little bit of DC power to try and power them. It does come in handy with these mini PCs, they're a little bit short on power. And uh, we can even compare it to a NAS, maybe something like this, the Smart Store NS4300N. Now the total cost is sitting around 217 US dollars for this little mini PC. I'm going to call it a Frankenstein mini PC. But thus far, it looks pretty capable. We're going to beat it on power draw, hopefully. And uh, that's what we're here to do. We're going to measure the power draw for each one. We're going to make sure that we get a nice little table right at the end. So stay tuned for that table. We'll look at all those components and how much power they're drawing. But here's the first candidate, the 16 terabyte Exos X18. Man, that is a massive hard drive. Wait, can we even run these in mini PCs? Did anyone check this? Of course we can. Absolutely no trouble. Now you will have some problem with installation. I feel like we could probably just like leave it balancing a little. No, that doesn't quite look stable. Tell you what, we'll use one of these DC cable connectors. We'll plug it into USB and we'll connect it up with DC power. That's easy enough. And if you think that looks familiar, a little bit of a push start there. Well, usually you'll get a check engine light when you mess around. But in this case, I'm pretty confident we'll get it to rev up nicely uh, because I've done this all before, so it's pretty straightforward. We'll use a little magic there to switch it on without assembling it. But anyway, there's the power draw. For this hard drive, we're pushing around 20 watts, maybe up to about 37 or so watts when this drive is spinning at full speed. So that's actually quite a lot of power, but that does confirm we can use external DC power to keep the hard drive spinning, which is pretty cool. We'll just uh, quickly switch that off. And uh, let's test our next candidate. This is going to be a quite a unique little adapter. We're going to get an X8 adapter running into our M.2. Now take note, this isn't the NVMe slot, the M key. This is the a &E slot. And I'm just going to do some quick testing. I want to know how much power does this thing provide or how much can I put in here and get something to run. So we'll do something simple like a NVMe. Can we put an NVMe on the slot? Well, indeed we can once we convert it. So here it is. Let's connect up our power. Safety first, very important. I'm plugging, especially when the machine looks a little bit... Uh, Frankenstein-ish. But uh, let's quickly jump start it. Okay, that's running beautifully. And now let's check the power. Put your numbers in the poll or put your numbers in the chat. Let's see what you think this is going to pull. But okay, we got our green indicator. So far, so good. Let's uh, grab our data logging and see where this is. But I don't think this is going to be too much of a problem. It is meant to have external power, but I feel like we'll probably get away with it because it's such a low power drawing thing. And definitely want to test out the M.2 slot as well. But for now, let's just do the base measurements. We'll have to come back to that 10 gigabit card as well. I had some problems, uh, but more on that in the future. But here it is, the M.2, and let's see what the M key can deliver in terms of power usage. Now, expecting both of these to be relatively low. Don't worry about the data too much for now. We'll get onto that right at the end. But let's continue our journey here. So again, I'm not going to provide any external power. I just want to make sure this powers, and we're looking for a increase in the amount of power that's being used. Okay, it's sitting around 26-ish watts. That's a pretty decent bump. Okay, there it came down. Nice. It's about 19 or so watts. 
Okay, 19 watt, that's a pretty good indicator. Now let's try our next candidate, this 2.5 gigabit network interface card that plugs into the A and E slot. That's gonna be really handy to give us some fast networking. But for now it's uh, very poorly mounted here, but I think these are meant to have network cables and drivers, so this might not be a fair test. I think we'll have to actually go into our OS, install drivers, actually connect this to something else. But in the meantime, we'll measure it anyway, just to check. And oh, 9 watt, that's pretty low. Good to see, booting up. I assume that's loading the BIOS, because again, there's no actual hard drive on there, but uh, okay, 16. From around 16, so that's not too bad. I don't think it's working at the moment, so we'll have to install drivers. But anyway, that's another one down. Let's jump on to the next one here, these DC cables. Now take note, there are two versions of these. I have purchased both for my benefit, but you can get one for external DC power or just a standard USB connector. But for SSDs, I don't think we need external power. We could just do a normal USB adapter. They're really low power drawing. So let's check, what does one SSD draw? Okay, machine powered up, let's check the data. Whoa, is that even pulling any power? That's actually really good. So still about 16, interesting. Well, SSDs probably don't draw too much unless you're absolutely loading them. So maybe we can get away with about 0.5 of a watt. That's a pretty power efficient server. But uh, let's keep going here. We'll stack on a second one. Is that crunching normal? That reminds me of crunching CPU pins. Not a pretty thing to do, but we'll assume that crunching noise is normal. That's okay, we'll just wedge that in there, perfect. All right, that's uh, a bit of a scary thought, but okay, let's plug this one in and see what a power draw is when we have two SSDs connected to this machine. Okay, next run. Okay, that wasn't too bad, pretty solid. Now there is one more test we need to do, which is a NAS. This is a NAS that I had lying around for many decades. Okay, probably at least a decade, but it's not really working anymore and it's become somewhat redundant. You can get them really cheap, probably like $40 US. And uh, let's power it on. We'll have a look at it. We'll see what it's doing. Last time I powered it, it worked, but I don't think it's working anymore. But let's have a look. 48 watts. Whoa, that's pretty heavy. And it's not even filled with drives. There's only two in there at the moment. So that's not ideal. But okay, we got a red light. That's never a good sign. But uh, 40 watts. Okay, so pretty decent power draw there. I'm sure it'll come down once it's uh, initialized itself. Okay, that's a little bit better. But man... It's like 28 watts. What's what's up with this? I thought a NAS was meant to be low power draw. It's okay, let's uh, do our test. We'll take out one of these hard drives. Yes, there's only two in there at the moment. Sorry, I'm uh, running a little bit low on hard drives. They're all on my other machine. But anyway, that's a different story for another time. We'll check a related video. So taking out one hard drive, we lose maybe two or three watt. That's not too shabby. And take note, these are pretty small capacity drives as well. There's another, okay, 21 watt. So pretty decent numbers but man those uh hard drives are pretty heavy on the power draw aren't they they do draw quite a lot but we're not here to talk about a nas i'm here to show you how to take this nas apart in a future video of course not today otherwise we'll be here all day but this is going to allow us to use the casing of this no longer working all that well nas and take note, that was limited to USB 2.0, so it's a really old system. It's back to like the early 2000s, I think. So now we have the ability to use this as a hard drive caddy. Yes, it looks chaotic for now, but I'm just testing. We will clean it up at the end. Uh, but you'll have to subscribe, otherwise you won't be able to see where this build's going to go. And take note, we can even cut off this little bit here on our SATA connector, which will allow external power to something like that x16 m.2 slot if you want to run like a graphics card but that's a video for a future time for now let's check out the data we'll load up my lab zero and oh there's the data being printed out right now don't you just love ai these days they do all the hard work for us okay there's the data now i can't see it so well now but i guess we'll zoom in on it i'm sure you want to see the final data i mean this is what we're here for okay lab zero loading up oh beautiful beautiful look at that that that's some really good data there okay base system so around seven to nine watt. Man, these HP mini PCs are really cool. With the 32 gig RAM, we got a nice boost in uh, power draw. That's not ideal. Now, interesting, the power increase there with the Exos X18. So looking at the numbers there, it's a little bit variable, which wasn't expected. But then to be fair, on that initial test, I did have a SSD plugged in with an OS. So that was like the final system. But uh, mm, that might mean Windows is going to create some variability. But most of the testing was done without an OS plugged in, so that does help. 
Now checking the rest of the data here, we've got our A and E key and our M key, subtle jumps, both of those actually only had an NVMe, so that's an interesting uh, change there, 16, but 16 to me looks like almost no power draw, which makes sense, the A and E key only has one PCIe lane, and thus it should use less power, so it kind of makes sense. The M.2 seems a bit heavy though, maybe that was a little biased. We'll keep going, the 2.5 also on 16, again the 2.5 gigabit ethernet connector there, NIC, network interface card, that makes sense. It's it's barely using any power because there's only one electrical lane, so that's easy. Next one, SSDs. Man, that, that's pretty tough going. I don't think I had the accuracy to actually see those differences. But I'd say maybe 0.5 of a watt, give or take, per SSD, maybe a little bit more, depending on how heavily they're used. I mean, that's, that's not even a problem. Then there's the NUS. Okay, the NUS was using around 12 watts, when it was off, that is an error in the data. Why does it say when it was on? It was 12 watts before I switched it on. That's kind of a scary thought. It's okay, the AI doesn't always get it correct. Now if we jump over to the other side of the data, this is where the magic really happens because now we can do a difference. We can see almost exactly how much power each of these components are consuming. And we'll zoom out a little bit so we can see all of this data together. And there it is, beautiful. So RAM installation, we're looking at about maybe five watt give or take just for the ram i use the same ssd between the two tests so same os windows 10 uh, so hopefully that's fairly fairly accurate so we went from one module at eight gigabyte to two modules at 16 gigabyte each giving us a total of 32. so that's not too bad a decent jump there 2.5 per module presumably or maybe slightly higher because these are higher capacity modules the exos that was pretty heavy and if anything if we calculated off the max power that is going to be a problem because that I think is quite a bit of power for a mini PC. Now I did power this, full disclosure, with an external DC power connector, which is kind of like cheating. But in saying that, I don't think the mini PC will be able to hack that on one of those SATA ports. Keep that in mind. This might be drawing a little bit too much power, or at least that drive is drawing too much power. It is an enterprise grade drive, right? So that makes sense. Okay, now for those AE keys, looks like we're pulling around four watts through that particular slot, which isn't too shabby. That's definitely more than I would have expected for one electrical lane, but that's okay. And that reproduced on the 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapters. That's kind of cool. We had the M key NVMe and that actually bumped it up to seven. So that's somewhat unexpected, but in saying that there are more electrical lanes. Again, very logical. SSDs, well, we pushed around. Now again, not sure those numbers are correct, but well, we had a slight increase in power. I think that's because we we're in the OS, but theoretically I'm saying it's between 0.5 and maybe one watt per SSD, which isn't too bad. And then if we compare that to the smart store, that's actually quite a lot of power. And I guess that's the number we got to beat. We got to see if we can somehow get our power lower than say 36 watt, because I think then we're really beating that NUS. Although technically, I guess the NUS is sitting around maybe like 30 watt. Uh, during normal use. So, man, this is pretty cool. Let's have a look at the final results here. You can absolutely pause on that should you see need to have a look through that data. But as far as I can tell, that's a pretty interesting result. Could be useful for you guys planning your little mini PC builds as well, so you can see which components, if you stack them together, is going to produce what kind of power draw. Uh, so pretty cool. I think it's quite handy. So where do we go to from here? Excellent question. Well, that was the power draw phase. Being that it's a mini PC that I'm hoping to convert into somewhat of a server, Proxmox, VMs, maybe a little bit of power redundancy, the top secret method, I'll show you that in the future. But overall, the, the goal here is very simple. I just want to get some storage that I can leave running 24 seven. That's never going to be a problem in terms of power draw, relatively reliable, or at least I hope it will be, and fast, right? We want fast network storage in the modern day. Hence the 2.5 gigabit. Now, full disclosure, the 10 gigabit ethernet adapter is proving a little bit problematic. Initially, when I connected up, it just made lots of uh, noises. I then had to confirm it in another PC, put it in the HP Z840, and would you believe it? It worked, but I didn't get 10 gigabit. I think that one only gave me about four gigabits per second. Uh, that's gigabits per second, not gigabytes per second. So that's not too shabby for that particular adapter, because I believe they're like 20, maybe up to like 26 US dollars for 10 gigabit adapters. That's a good deal, but one caveat. 
they get really, really hot. I'm not joking, really hot. I had to put a fan on it, otherwise it would just go into meltdown and stop working. Can I use it in the mini PC? I had hoped it would work, but I don't think there's enough power, even with the external DC connector. I couldn't get it to boot on the mini PC. I, I tried my uh, absolute best. So I'm gonna say that one's debunked. I think it's a bit too much, a little bit too extreme for the mini PC. But nonetheless, that's not a problem. We can get this machine together, so stay tuned for the next video in this series where we actually uh, get this thing looking a little bit better and I guess we'll uh, get the Frankenstein mini PC looking like a server. Can I even call that a server? Yeah, we'll call it a server, but don't hate me in the comments too much. I'm gonna call it a server because that's my plan. But stay tuned, so much to come, especially the Proxmox setup. That's been really cool to play around with, getting our VM set up. And for now, I can confirm it's working flawlessly, got some really good network speeds as well. But stay tuned, we'll deal with that in a future video. In the meantime, take it easy. Races E out.